What's up guys, it's Matt Collins-Jones here, also known as the D365Geek, and today I am talking about testing your Microsoft Flows. So, in any business, in any situation, you always want to test any sort of automation or any sort of process. And Microsoft Flow gives you this ability. So today we're going to go through some testing and show you kind of what the results are like. So here we have a, uh, a small um, flow that I built. This has a Twitter trigger and we have an email action after it. So what we are doing here is when a tweet from the at D365Geek, which is my Twitter handle, is created, we send an email to this email address and we put in some dynamic content from that, um, from that tweet. Now, in the top right hand side, we have a few buttons. We have save, we have flow checker, and we also have test. The test is what we're going to be concentrating on today. So we click on test. You'll notice I have two options here. Now, if this is the very first time you run a flow, you will only have the one option. Um, on, there are a couple of other, um, a couple of um, caveats to this. Um, which is like certain triggers and things like that, just allow you to just trigger the flow. But these are the two options that you'll generally have. I'll perform the trigger action or using data from a previous run, um, then save and test the flow again. So in this instance, I, I have tested this tweet, I have tested this flow before uh, using a tweet and therefore I get this option. But if I choose this first option, I'll perform the trigger save and test what we will see is the flow now goes into this state you have this little box at the top that says to see it work now create a new tweet this may take a few moments this this is um this is for any sort of trigger so creating a tweet create an email create a record whatever it is so i will pop over to my uh twitter account and we're going to send a test tweet so this is a test tweet or twist as I call it. That's a very bad joke. So click on save and we can say that see the um, the tweet has sent or credit back over to our flow and then in a few moments we should hopefully see that most of the flow goes off, it looks for that tweet, um, once it sees that tweet, uh, it will pull down the pull down the dynamic content, and it will send an email. This may take a few minutes because Microsoft uh, Flow will be trying to talk to that um, the Twitter API and the details. This is the same for anything. Oh, here we go. Uh, so I have some green things. So that's always good. Green thing at the top with green banner with a little tick, your flow ran successfully. This is good news. Uh, we also have a little tick next to each thing that happened. So if I expand this, we can get a bit more data from this test tweet. So we have this input. So this is what we were searching for. And then we have the output. And this is all the data that we're actually getting from this trigger itself. Um, so down here we have the body, and this is where the Microsoft Flow engine has called the API, and we have parsed this in what's called JSON, and we can see this is all the information that we are getting back from Twitter. So we've got things like um, the created at time and date, uh, we've got the tweeted by, so that's the Twitter handle, uh, we've got the full name, Matt Collins Jones, that's me. And my location is the Ninja Cave, it's a secret location, can't tell you where it is, uh, but it's somewhere near Manchester. Uh, we can get the username again. So yeah, we get all this, uh, all this content back uh, in the JSON. Uh, and then what Microsoft Flow can do is it can understand what these bits are and we can parse that into the, um, into the email and into the data. So when we go to send an email, we see the tweets from Matt Collins Jones, uh, and we can see what was the tweet and the full name in here. Uh, and if I go to my emails, 
and we look at my sent emails, we can see that there was a tweet at this time. Uh, what was the tweet and what the full name is? Those are actually blank uh, because I've used the wrong direct content. Oh well, this was a good test. Um, and that is why you actually test things because now I know that the dynamic content I chose for these two fields is actually the incorrect one, which is brilliant. Let's go back and let's edit the flow and get some more details. So what was the tweet? So we want the description of the tweet and we want the full name as well of the user. So if I look in the body of this text here, uh, I can see the tweet text is actually what we want for the description. This is a test tweet or a twist as I call it. And we also want a uh, full name as Matt Collins Jones and the username as D365. So that's the details we want and that's great because we know now that there's been a few issues with uh, the content that we put in the email. So I can go back to my flow. Um, I can uh, remove this. We want a username here. Uh, so uh, a user username, screen name of the user. We add that in there. And what was the tweet? Uh, and that was tweet text. Uh, oh, thing is missed. Tweet. Uh, text. So tweet text and that's what we want in here. And then full name, we're gonna again search full name, uh, original tweets user full name. That sounds about right. Uh, yeah. Um, so one of the things I've just done there is if I hover over the dynamic content, I can actually see some additional details about what that's doing. Um, so in the middle there we've got uh, the very end there, we've got the full name in the brackets, which is what we want. Now, I can now test this again, but instead of having to create another tweet, I can use that last tweet. It's going to get all the same information, but we've updated the dynamic content. So hopefully, these should be the fields that we need in our, um, in our email to the user. So instead of using I'll perform the trick, trigger action like I did last time, we're going to choose using data from a previous run. And there we have a couple of options. We have one from 35 minutes ago. We have one from four minutes ago. So I choose the one from four minutes ago, because that's the one we've just done. Save and test. This should hopefully be a bit quicker. You can see the flow is running. We now get this menu where we can kind of see it step by step going through. This is especially good for sort of like a really long flow. Uh, and again, we can see that this runs successfully and we can see uh, the email that's come out. So again, we're going to go over to our emails. We'll have a look. Uh, so we got a tweet from D365Geek. That's what we wanted. Uh, when this tweet was sent out, uh, that time, this date, uh, what was the tweet? This, oh, we're still missing full name. So again, this is good. We can kind of test and keep going through this process to get the right fields, because sometimes, as you can see with how I've been using it, it's not always very clear what those full details are and what those fields are. So using testing before you do anything, put into production, in sandbox is absolutely key. So I hope this video was useful. If you've got any questions or any comments, please leave them in the comments box below. Uh, please like and subscribe uh, to my channel and like this video. And I'll see you next time.